Hey you, I'm really glad you're here for today's episode of Content Creation Made Easy. I'm your host, Jen Liddy. Today I'm talking to Kristen Lawton. Kristen is a brand and marketing expert. She calls herself a marketing mixologist, which you'll kind of hear as uh, is part of her brand. And we are talking about branding today. Now I'm, as you know, a super big word nerd, but visuals, uh, branding, colors, all of those things completely elude me, which is why I was really excited to talk to Kristen, because she's going to bring in how to kind of weave branding cohesively through your content, no matter what kind of content you do. She's actually going to unpack for us her system that she brings her clients through. And we're going to talk all about how to get a handle on your marketing once and for all in terms of the content and the branding without overwhelm. Kristen's business is called District Brand Bar, and she has decades of experience working with solopreneurs just like you to craft your brand voice, your brand sense, your brand vibe, and getting the foundation in place so that you can mix up your best marketing uh, cocktail, if you if you will. Um, welcome, Kristen. Thank you for being here and for agreeing to do this. I know you had a very busy morning, so I'm really glad you're here. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you so much. I'm, I'm very excited about the conversation. I okay. love all things branding. <laughs> First of all, tell us a little bit about you know your business and how you came to be in your business. Yeah. So I, uh, my business is like a pandemic baby. Like I feel like a lot of <laughs> people's businesses are, especially solopreneurs. Um, I did branded marketing um, in I'm based in Washington, D.C. Um, for nonprofits and small businesses and corporations and you name it uh, for 20 plus years. And I really wanted to shift. Uh, it worked out that I was let go from my job right at the start of the pandemic, COVID such. Uh, and, you know, so I started it um, I'm coming up on three years and, you know, I really wanted to help. I, I did the led a massive rebranding project for um, my last organization. From there, I started consulting with other organizations going through rebrands. And I just loved the sort of coaching aspect of helping the small businesses, organizations, solopreneurs, whoever sort of figure out their brand and marketing um strategies and then i sort of have always been very into like productivity tips and having like a really strong work life balance finding joy in everything that you do so i really focus on making sure that your strategies and routines are uh efficient effective and effortless mm -hmm. and then when i started my business i'm like you know i love cocktails i love crafting cocktails there's so many similarities between mixology and marketing and so I have a whole brand theme, which is uh, cocktails and mixology. And so that's why I am the marketing mixologist. Okay. <laughs> Question that came up while you were sharing yeah. all of that is, I don't think I have a good um, definition for what brand means. Yeah. So what the hell is brand and how is it different from or woven into marketing in general? Yeah. So I think, you know, the, the way I see a brand is anything someone uh, experiences that's like external to your brand. So anything that's like front facing of your business and that, you know, as, as someone might like go through the journey with you, like they're experiencing different parts of your brand. So I think people think about like branding and brand identity as just like your logo or like your color scheme, or maybe you might extend it to your website, but it's really sort of like stopped there. But to me, your brand, your brand and your brand identity like goes, in well into your marketing um it covers you know obviously like i think it covers your messaging um your brand values your brand positioning your uh your certainly the look and feel but i think it also covers your who your target audience is your um client journey uh and your content pillars and sort of it is really when you think about your brands like what kind of experience are you sort of like giving to your audience and it's all of those touch points for me Okay. So it's, it's a lot of touch points. And I think I, I have definitely in my past made the mistake of like brand equals a color palette, yeah. uh, a logo. I've also kind of eked out that it's also your voice, like how, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, certainly your brand voice, your personality, yes. your tone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you're saying it kind of is woven in through everything. So I think there's like, you know, a brand is, is sort of like the step right below your business, right? Okay. It's sort of like, so your business to me, I think more like when I'm thinking like business strategies, it's that internal stuff, like how the wheels are moving. Okay. And then the brand is sort of everything external. Yeah. Now then your branding is sort of what helps create 
sort of the the assets of your brand. Mm -hmm. And then the marketing is how you're getting people to see your brand. Yeah, that's really mm -hmm. clear. Um, what do you think are some mistakes that people make with their brand, the brand piece of their marketing or their brand piece of their business? I think a lot of it is that you don't think about it mm. as much, right? <laughs> All right, that's fair. <laughs> and so, and I think, you know, you, you're you honing, you know, certainly like the aspects of your business, the services, your offerings, you know, you're just, when you start out, you're so focused on, okay, I'm just going to like, you know, get a business name, a logo, a website up, and I'm just going to start on social media. I'm going to start like marketing things, but you're not really thinking about like who you really are, how you want to present yourself to your audience. Like, the difference between especially we work with but we both work with a lot of solopreneurs so you're really talking about like a personality brand mm -hmm. and because they're usually the face of it so like how what's different between you and your business and how do you want to sort of represent that um so i do think a lot of it is just you sort of skipping a lot of those foundational steps mm -hmm. of creating your brand and you go to specific points of the brand identity uh look and feel maybe some messaging, but you're not looking sort of like holistically. Is the, is that important because it sets you apart online? Is totally. there another, is there another reason it's important besides setting you apart? Yeah. So I think it sets you apart for me. I think it's also like all about consistency. And so oh, when you yeah. show up online, um, not only are you a little more authentic because you've sort of, you know who you are and it's easy to represent, but, and we're going to talk about consistency because I think when you are on brand and sort of like every piece of content you put out just like screams you and your brand, yeah. you are consistent and people are like, Oh, I know that's Jen Liddy, you know? Right. Uh, like even before they hear what you have to say, they can, they can sense that, Oh, I, this is like Jen's brand or this is Kristen's brand. Exactly. You know what this reminds me of when I was growing up, my mother would like, my mother was very moody when I was growing up and I never knew which mother I was going to get when I walked in the door. Yeah. And I'm like, is do I have happy mom today? Do I have yeah. crabby mom? Do I have angry mom? Um, do I have like, we're doing chores today, mom. I never knew, but like, I get the sense that a brand, the consistent brand helps people know always what to expect yeah. from you yeah. as your, as your business face. Not yet, exactly. They they know what to expect. They know, oh, like, you know, if they see, so like, you know, they're scrolling their feed, they should be able to sort of recognize it once they get to know you. So they're gonna like yeah. stop and pause. It also makes your job so much easier marketing your business because, you know, you have these set of principles when it comes to your brand of like, and we're gonna get into all these sort of like brand ingredients. Yeah. Um, but it just, again, I'm all about marketing effortlessly and just making yeah. things feel so much easier. And when you know your brand really well and you've sort of laid those foundations, it's very easy to do that. You know, when I'm writing content, I feel like knowing my brand really well helps me like when, say I was just writing an email this morning and mm -hmm. I was like, I wouldn't really use that word or I wouldn't yeah. really uh, like I was going to say prob instead of probably. And I'm like, yeah. I never say that in real life. I'm not going yeah. to say that just to save a few moments in my email. Mm -hmm. And so having that brand voice, it, it helps me know what I can write. And like you said, write it easier. The other thing that I think it does is it kind of builds trust with your audience because like, if you say something that seems completely like mm -hmm. off brand for you, like for example, mm -hmm. oh my God, I don't know if I've told you this, but I got my Facebook ads account hacked and they started oh. selling $14,000 worth of um, ads to a Jesus loves you blanket. And I was oh. like, I am not religious. I literally never talk about religion. I never talk about Jesus. Like that is not my brand at yeah. all. It's, it's right. like, and so I was kind of shocked when there were so many comments on it, when like this, this mm -hmm. hacker had overtaken my Facebook and I was like, don't people get like, this isn't me. That's like this, this right. is not me. Yeah. <laughs> it's just got hacked. Um, so I feel like that's all really helpful stuff to know why a brand is super mm -hmm. important. So we're, our biggest mistake is we're just not thinking about it. I, yeah, I think so. And I think it's just, you know, you haven't put in the time and it's not a lot of time, but to just really understand it. So then you're wasting time also as you know, at the back right. end to, as you go through the marketing. So I just think understanding your brand really well and thinking about how someone is experiencing your brand also yeah. makes marketing and creating content and everything else so much easier and yeah. effective. Okay. So today you're going to kind of break down for us your system. All right. I can't wait to hear. So by the end of it, we're going to be able to feel like we can be more consistent. We understand what branding is. We can start to take the time to implement it in our 
in our businesses. Yeah, awesome. Exactly. All right. So, you know, my basically I want to break down my sort of recipe for staying on brand. Okay. And so that when you, you know, anytime you're creating a piece of content or, you know, updating your website or whatever it is, think about anything that's like an online presence for you, a lead magnet, whatnot, mm -hmm. you can just like quickly scan it and say, yep, I'm on brand. Okay. Uh, creating the brand is a whole different thing. And it's certainly something that I would love to help your listeners out with. Um, I walk through it in my membership, but that is sort of a different story. But we're going to walk through all the elements so you know what you need to create. Okay, sounds so good. That you can stay on brand. Yeah. So it is super simple. And essentially, I think there's like five ingredients. We're calling it ingredients because I'm all about mixology <laughs> and, and crafting a cocktail. Uh, so let's say you have five different, you know, bottles on the bar. All you have to do is, in, is, a, is make sure that three of them are in your cocktail and three of them are sort of in your piece, your content, and then you're good. Okay. And it's pretty simple. So I'll just tell you them really fast and then we can break them down. Sounds good. But so one is brand colors, two are design elements. So think specific fonts, imagery, graphics. Ah. Three is your brand voice, tone, personality, sort of that vibe check that like you're writing yourself. Uh, four is your content pillars. Uh, and then five is sort of your messaging, word bank. I also consider like emojis in this, but okay. we can, but so those are the five. So if you can scroll through, look through at a piece of your content, a social media post, whatever, and say, yep, three, I have three brand elements in that piece, then like to me, you're good. It's, it's a super simple, just like, Checklist almost. Say, like, okay, this piece is on brand. I'm consistent with my audience. All right. So break break the first one down for us. So brand colors. Okay. Um, and so this is something, you know, we usually pick out our brand colors of, like right at the beginning. So true. Uh, when you do your logo. Uh, I will say your brand colors are allowed to evolve. Uh, I like to have three main colors and like two accent colors. Okay. Um you should pick something that pick colors that you enjoy because you're going to be creating content. You are the one looking at this all of the time. People are going to see your content, you know, maybe a 10th of your content. Sometimes it's even like 3% of your content. Right. So don't focus when you're creating your colors, you're coming up with your colors. Like think about colors you like that you will be happy designing with. Maybe go in your closet, see what colors you wear most often, what pieces of jewelry you're like drawn to. I picked my brand colors. They're like orange and red based on my two favorite cocktails, which is a Negroni and an Aperol Spritz. Uh, an Aperol Spritz is what I consider my like my business's cocktail. Uh, and so, you know, I picked those, but then I add in a couple other like fun colors, like blue and green that sort of like, you compliment. know, compliment and mm -hmm. sort of think about like, I like thinking about making people's life easier when it comes to marketing and so that they can enjoy vacations. They can have the mojito. That's okay. the green. They can be outside the blue, you know, so you have your idea of your colors. Okay. But those are sort of the colors, but I'd say like stay consistent. Don't, you know, add in too many colors. If you just, you know, I think colors is an easy way to create a cohesive brand. It's I think from when I used to work with beginner entrepreneurs, it is also a place where they can spend a lot of time and get distracted and do that procrastination thing yeah. where they're just like, Oh, I just need, to, and my colors need to be perfect before I can move on. So it's a place for you to mm. waste a lot of time, I think. A hundred percent. And this is where, you know, like, I, I'm a quick, just like, I'm a quick decision mm -hmm. maker. And so I was just like, boom, those are the colors. Um, but you know, but then I, they've evolved, right? So like I went with a brighter red over time or I've added in the, like the blue and the green, I've added in like a lighter yellow. Um, so anything with branding can evolve. Now you don't want to just like every other month totally switch things up, right? <laughs> right Cause right. then you are definitely not staying consistent and having this cohesive brand that we want. But if over time you realize, you know what, it would be really nice to have this type of accent color on my website or to be able to play with a different color in Canva, add that in, stay consistent with it. But yes. Anything that you do, just like, yeah, always just, just launch. Yes. Those things can work themselves out because <laughs> no matter what, like when you launch, I trust, trust me, your business is going to change and evolve within the first 100%. year to a hundred percent. So nothing needs to be like set in stone at the beginning. <laughs> right. So then what's the next thing after that? So design elements. Okay. So, you know, think like, I don't know, some people may really be into um, polka dots 
or but whatever, you know, like I for a while went through a phase with my brain where I had a lot of like neon signs uh, or like was using the like oh, neon font in okay. Canva with like the bar sign. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, but staying consistent with fonts, one, it just makes it really easy. If you know in Instagram stories what font you're, you use every single time, you don't have to like go through and try everything. You can just like put it up, right? Like yeah. if you, you know, so if there's different, um, just any kind of design elements that you do, maybe you really like suns and you're using suns a lot or, you know, whatever it is, but specific graphics. I've gone through a big branding shoot uh, at the end of last year. And so a lot of like, is, if I'm using one of those images, cause we went through a lot to make sure those images were on brand, like I'm good, you know, mm -hmm. that's like a big check for me. Okay. What's the third one? Uh, brand voice. Okay. This is, I think, more nuanced. It is more nuanced and probably where you can speak a lot to this <laughs> as well. <laughs> but I think, you know, so my easy check for like knowing your brand voice, well, my old one was to uh, open up Grammarly and type in, you know, a piece in Grammarly and it will tell you what your tone of voice is. Interesting. My new trick is to go into ChatGPT okay. and put in a really, you know, maybe it's like the first email of your welcome series or your lead magnet or something that you, you feel like just really is like well written to your brand, your voice and ask it, what is my brand voice? Like what vibe am I giving off? Uh, what's the tone? And it will tell you what it is. Because um, sometimes we don't know. We think we're friendly. We think we're relatable or empathetic or cheerful or professional. And then mm -hmm. you really need to like have a sense of what it is. And I love using those tools because once you know, like specifically what Grammarly says your tone is, then every time if you have the Grammarly extension, you know, when you write the piece of content, you can just check, is my tone in there? And you're like, okay, I'm good. I'm on brand. I literally never thought about using AI for this, although I know it's a huge thing that people are talking mm -hmm. about. Um, I don't, I, I think that people get confused between using an AI tool tool as like, oh, this is going to reduce my voice rather than asking it to define my voice or express, or not express, but like reflect my voice right. back to me yeah. really. So if you can just make that tweak in your head, like mm -hmm. it's not going to take away your voice. It's actually mm -hmm. can reflect it for you. A hundred percent. And if you do, you know, cause then I will say, you know, I'm writing a piece, you know, I need to write a blog post today. Here's the outline. Um, will you draft it and put it in my brand voice? here's what you said of my brand voices. And I literally copy in what it told me, my brand voices, the paragraph it gave me. And certainly there's tweaking, right? Because I will ask it to put in like mixology terms and mm -hmm. it will just like load it in. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that does not sound like me. Everyone will be like, someone else wrote that for you. Uh -huh. um, but it gives you that, you know, it, it certainly it's a shortcut that I am loving these days to just That's get That's a really cool suggestion. Thank mm -hmm. you for getting specific on that. Yeah. So after, uh, and, and you're not saying these are in any particular order or are oh, they no, in order? Okay. Not. Okay. Nope. It was okay. just how I wrote them on my notes for you. Beautiful. So we're <laughs> focused know, on really our, you want time. our voice, mm -hmm. our, um, uh, the elements, whether that's yep. our font. Design elements. Yeah. Yes. Design elements and then colors. Yes. Okay. So those are the first three. What's next? So next are your main content pillars. Oh yes. Um, my favorite. Uh, yes, I know you talk about content pillars too. Um, so the way that I teach is I think mm -hmm. you have like three main content pillars and then two sort of um, more fun ones or things that you sort of will talk about on occasion or maybe like cocktails is one for me. Oh yeah. Um, so for those, I think it's like much more your main, like people know that I'm going to talk about branding, they're going to talk about marketing, and I'm going to be talking about like systems and routines to make all mm -hmm. of that more effortless. Uh, and so if, as long as if I'm talking about one of those, then, you know, I'm good. It's like, I can check it off. And again, this is where you only have to choose three or five because not every time am I going to talk about my main content pillar, Sure. but then I need to I make sure that like, I still have two, you know, three other things in that piece of content that I can check off. As a content specialist from my experience, yeah. Yeah. people tend to get really jammed up about their content pillars and they overcomplicate it. And I love the examples that you just gave because you super simplified it. So under each one of those pillars, you know, branding, marketing, and systems, like those are your three yep. top ones, you probably have a bajillion 
or infinite number of things yeah. that you can talk about. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get jammed up about your content pillars. Like I, I actually told one of my clients uh, when we were working on her pillars, I'm like, let's not get precious with your content pillars. Like yeah, it, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. We don't have to be precious about it. She laughed. She, she knew she laughed. <laughs> I love that. I was working with a client recently and I'm like, and she listed off all these pillars and they were, and I'm like, those are topics within yes. a pillar. And I was like, let's combine these mm -hmm. into these. And so I was like, these are these groupings. And so she realized like, yes, because they get very granular. I'm like, let's yes. take it We got to go up a couple thousand, 10,000 feet. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. So think of buckets, pillars, like big, yeah. big containers. Right. Yes. Okay. I love that. I'm glad we covered that. And then yeah. what would the last thing be to consider? Okay. So the last one is also probably a newer house. And this is like your messaging, your word bank. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, you know, if you've gone through the work to sort of have your key messages uh, in your brand story, then sort of as long as, you know, if you're always tying those back in, you have your word bank uh, or, you know, your personal library or language library, whatever. People have a lot of words, they call it. But those words that you use a lot, a lot. Right. So for me, like, you know, because, again, I have the mixology cocktail theme. I use cheers a lot or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, different things, different ways that I say I've got you or, you know, different types of words that I just use naturally yeah. as I talk. And then I also think that everyone has like three emojis that they use regularly in their business <laughs> or that they should have like three. If you're, you know, if you like that, if you are someone that um, has a brand voice that is less professional tone uh, and more in the like friendly, casual yeah. tone like me, I think, you know, using a well-placed emoji is great. Uh, but so consider what like your brand emojis are. And so you can use those. Yeah. I think one of my brand emojis is the eye roll. Emoji. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's my number one emoji. Every time I go to use emojis, it's right there. Question about messaging um, and your word bank. Um, how do you differentiate that for your clients between um, voice and between um what was the other one we talked about uh, between voice and personality tone? The next one. Oh my god! Why? Why is my brain and not the working? Content pillars. Yeah, the content pillars. Hmm. So, um, so when I think about messaging, when I work with my clients on messaging, we're we're really working on their full brand story, and a lot of it is around the stages of awareness. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're defining what the problem is, you know, the solution that you're solving for them. Um, why you're the right person to do this, what mm -hmm. the transformation is, um, and sort of giving them their like, you know, general like I help statement, their unique positioning. And so we have crafted uh, like true key messages that you can just like plug and play that then we're putting in your brand voice. Yes. Um, and they relate to your, con your content pillars because likely you're helping them solve for a problem they're experiencing in one of your content pillars, right? So like yeah. I'm helping people work on their brand. I'm helping people work on their marketing and solve the pain point of feeling overwhelmed by creating them systems. Um, and so, and I think the word bank goes back to the brand voice a little bit, but it, but not every time are you going to copy in a key message sure. or pull from a key message. And that's where having your brand voice in there is good because you know, you may be sort of a little off topic or just telling a story, right? And so if your brand voice and personality is about um, more being relatable or being a cheerleader or supportive, then your storytelling is going to come through with those personality points. So it can be a little different from those. I get the sense that each of these is very foundational and they do yeah. take time. Some people can't, some people for like, the, the three of these things will be very easy. Two will be very hard. Um, but I want people to walk away from today feeling like if you're struggling with these, mm -hmm. like you don't have to struggle by yourself. I think you've outlined the basics for what people need to be thinking about. And I love how you differentiated the mark, the, the messaging piece from content pillars and voice, because that message is like, that is like the baked in goodness. And if your message is not clear, it just like, makes everything else very messy. Yes. Yeah. Um, certainly like a muddle message, like won't sell anything. Right. And yeah. I think, yeah. um, it, you know, it, so as an example of like, I do think you should like go through these once a year, twice, every, yeah. every two years, I'm working through this with my membership right now. We're sort of like reworking on the everyone's foundations and we've done 
uh, all five of these or four of these within a month, mm -hmm. um, That's about an hour to a week. So it's not a lot of time mm -hmm. that if you if you have the right guidance, uh, you know, it, I don't think it takes much effort and time to sort of craft these and, and feel confident in them. Um, but it is something that sort of like, if you haven't, if you can't say, you know, that you can immediately name like your content pillars or your mm -hmm. colors or your three emoji, you know, whatever it is, like, then it is time to sort of like, okay, take a step back, do a little homework. Um, it, it doesn't take too long to figure these out, but once you have them, you'll feel really confident in your brand and be able to create content easier. Yeah. There was something I wanted to add in about one of the, the one of my content pillars is you have to know yourself, your strengths and your challenges so that marketing actually works for you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we're trying to do things that we've seen somebody like who's a mentor, somebody who's out there successful or perhaps like an internet guru doing or who has taught us, but it doesn't feel right to us. And I think a really easy place to check in here with our conversation is, are you a word person? If so, hmm. messaging yeah. might be easier for you. Content totally. pillars might be easier for yeah. you. Are you a visual person? If so, those first two that you talked about are going to be way easier for you. All of those visual branding things. Now for me, like that is absolutely my kryptonite. So I, hi the person I hired to constantly help me is my right arm, Jessica, who always does all of my uh, visual branding and stuff. Yeah. But if I had to do that by myself, and mm -hmm. even when I do do that by myself, so even when like she's created something for me and I mess with it a little bit, she, I don't know how she hasn't killed me yet, but like she kind of is like, oh my God, I have to fix yeah. this. And so just knowing your own proclivities and strengths, I love that. Yeah. just lean into that. So you might not need a whole overhaul, but you might need to focus on the parts of your branding that are not your strength and which is totally okay. We 100%. all can't be strong in everything. And, yeah, no, I mean, certainly not. Like I... Um, I love the design stuff. I'm definitely more of a visual person. I can, you know, um, I like, you know, if you send me a long email, I'm skimming it type of a yes, thing, you know, yes. I'm not reading all of the words. I'm good with messaging, but, uh, personally, I still like, I'm, I'm visual first. Yeah. Um, and that's where I think when you're not, you know, whatever one you're a little weaker in or don't feel as confident in, that's when you lean into the system. So mm -hmm. for you, I would say like you set up you know, in Canva, for instance, like your brand kit. So you can just yes. click on like, you can click on the template uh, that you're using, click on the design thing and it like puts it in your brand colors. It puts it in your brand fonts and you don't even have to like do anything else. It just yes. like does it for you, right? You know, you just choose the like the one color or two colors and like the two fonts in Instagram that you're gonna use yeah, or whatever it is. Don't have to recreate the wheel. The other thing that I like about identifying your own strengths and your own challenges is you know where you need feedback from. So like if people are in your membership and they're like, oh my God, I suck at the visual stuff. Kristen, can you please look at this thing? You're not doing it in a silo anymore going, I don't know, this feels kind of good. I don't know. And you're like, oh my God, and this sucks so bad. And here's why. And let me, yeah. let me help you shift that. And, and I think that's a really powerful thing when we know like, we don't, have to, we don't have to like uh, figure it out on our own. No, absolutely not. And even just sometimes you just need the confidence or the yes. boost, right? Of like send it to some person and just, you know, if you're, if you're questioning something, you know, put it in a poll in a story and say, which colors, you know, are, yeah. you, are you more drawn to? Or, you know, this messaging versus this messaging and just ask people like, no one's going to criticize that, you know, like right. they're just going to It's so vote. true. And then sometimes I think so much of it is you just like, even though you have the skills yourself and like, it's your brand, like you can do this. Uh, sometimes you just need someone else to say like, yes. <laughs> That's true. And also, you know, is that where you should be spending your time? Is that, you know, yeah. worth it for you? Because sometimes mm -hmm. just because we can do something doesn't mean we should do it totally. ourselves. Yes. So okay. I know that you have lots of resources for people in your content. How can people get into your orbit? Yes. Well, you're talking about like, you know, really understanding yourself. So I have this quiz that helps you understand how to really market your brand based on your personality and what feels really natural to you. So I would definitely say start there. It's okay. um, what's, you know, you really, you discover your signature brand marketing style. Uh, the results are all cocktail based. I, I think, Jen, you might be on the rocks. 
um, oh. which is you're very like confident, bold. You like you're very focused on your goals and checking tasks off mm -hmm. your list. Uh, <laughs> super focused on strategy. Uh, I am shaken. I like okay. to infuse my personality into a lot of things and it's very social. Uh, so I give specific tips on how to market your brand uh, based on your, your cocktail type. Uh, and so you can go to marketingstylequiz.com, but I'll give you the links as well. Yes, I'll put that uh, in the show notes. Yeah, uh, so that is a great way to start. It and everybody loves a quiz. Everyone loves a quiz. Everyone and that quiz. leads you into my membership, The Marketing Bar, where I help uh, you build your foundations of your brand marketing and systems. Uh, so if you're like, I need help on this, I've got you covered. It's a whole course plus one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. Oh, that's uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. I really do think that, that memberships and courses are so much more successful for people when there's a live person involved. Yeah. I really believe strongly in that. So I love hearing that you have that element built into your membership. Yeah, for sure. Kristen, thank you so much for all of these gems today. I feel like you've made it really uh, palatable and consumable <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, you know, really like broke it down so that it's just not um, this amorphous idea of what branding is. Right. It's like, it's just so clear. <laughs> you did such a great job. Thank Very you so clear. much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Listener, I appreciate you being here because I know how many freaking podcasts are out there. And I just appreciate that you've listened to this one. If you've gotten this far, would you leave a review for us to let other people know uh, that they can find content creation made easy to help them make content easier? I'll see you next week.